الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته On my watch it says 11.20 which is way past my bedtime. This is Saudi time. So if I fall asleep, do forgive me. If you do fall asleep, I'll forgive you inshallah. <laughs> the title was originally Hijack in Islam. And this was a misspelling because it was Hijacking Islam. So for security reasons, we thought that so we would have the conference ongoing, inshallah. We change it into Islam hijacked. Now, this goes without saying that the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal since the beginning of time is and will always be Islam. All the messengers of Allah, all the prophets of Allah were Muslims because the meaning of Islam is to submit your will to your creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why all prophets and messengers were Muslims. And this is illustrated in the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal says what translates to truly the religion with Allah is Islam. And whoever seeks a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted of him. And in the hereafter, he will be one of the losers. And it also goes without saying, and you all know this, that our name is Muslims. This is our title. This is what we are proud to announce to the people. Without affiliating ourselves with a school of thought or with a madhab, or with an a sect in Islam. Whenever someone asks us, we're Muslims. Yes, what kind of Muslim? Muslim. Yeah, I mean Salafi, Tablighi, Ikhwani, uh, Dubandi, Berlui, Qadiani, any kind of these names. My name is a Muslim. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالْ إِنَّنِي مِنْ الْمُسْلِمِينَ There's no one. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنْ This is negation. There's no one better in rhetoric more than that who calls to Allah, offer good deeds, and says that he is among the believers, among the Muslims. This name the Muslim is not something new. It is the name given to us by Allah Azza wa Jal. So it's not your choice. You don't have a choice. This is what Allah has called you. And Allah says, it is he who has named you Muslims both before and in this, meaning this Quran. Some interpreters said that it is he is referring to Ibrahim. Peace be upon him. And this is not the authentic opinion of scholar. The scholars say, no, this refers to Allah. It is he who called us, the Muslims, way before and also in this Quran as well. This is the name that you should abide by. And whenever we read in the seerah and we hear, well, actually, if you read, you see. And it, anyhow, this is past my bedtime, so... Whenever you read in the seerah and you read it in front of you that the best of the Ansar were the Khazraj and Al Aus, and the best of the Muslims were Al Muhajireen and the Ansar, those who migrated for the sake of Allah to Medina, and the inhabitants of Medina themselves are called the Ansar. It's a beautiful name. It's an honor that has no honor beyond it to be called a man from the Muhajireen or a man from Al Ansar. Yet this title itself, the Prophet ﷺ considered it 
a proclamation of ignorance and jahiliyyah. Imagine that. It was reported in Bukhari and Muslim and elsewhere that while two boys, two servants of the Muhajirin and Al-Ansar were taking water from a well in one of the expeditions, they fought over it and one of them kicked the other. So they started to fight and each one of them called his people. So the boy from Al-Muhajirin said, Oh, people of Al-Muhajirin, come to my aid. And the boy from the Ansar said, Oh, men or people of the Ansar, come to my aid. And both of the groups wanted to go into a fight. And the Prophet came, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he said, What is this? The proclamation of the days of jahiliyyah, of ignorance. This is what I'm hearing. What, is, what was he hearing? O oh, people of Ansar, O oh, people of Muhajirin. And he called this a form of calling the people to the days of ignorance and jahiliyyah. When they told him what had happened, he said, leave these names. Leave this situation calling each other in names because it stinks, it rots. Da'uha fa'innaha muntina. It stinks. Though they were calling each other Muhajireen and Al Ansar. No one is better than them. They are the cream of the society. Yet, when it was wrongly used, this what the Prophet ﷺ called it. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that the nations before us were divided and they split it into a number 70 plus sects and divisions and his ummah, his followers will be divided into 73. 72 of them are in hell. And the Prophet does not say a lie alayhi salatu wasalam. We have to believe this. We have to accept it. 72 of his sect of his followers are in hell. Only one will be admitted to paradise with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when the companion said, O Prophet of Allah, which one would that be? And he said, it is the jama'ah, the main body of the Muslims. And in another narration, he said, those who follow that which I, which I and my companions follow. So this is a serious issue, 72 in hell. But of course, we have to clarify that when we say 72 sects are in hell, this does not mean that they are not Muslims. There are among the 72 sects groups who are Muslim and who will be punished in hell and then be uh, uh, permitted to go out to paradise when Allah wills it and maybe if Allah wills it he would forgive them what they had done providing that Allah Azza wa Jal wills that and probably because they were doing the best they could and they made a mistake by choosing that path however among the 72 are sects that are not considered to be Muslims who are doomed in hell such as the Qadianis uh, uh, Ahmadis or what uh, whatever they uh, are called, the Baha'is, etc. Now, the difference between these 72 sects from what we believe to be our sect is not a difference in fiqhi issues. It's not a difference whether you put your hand on your chest in prayer or under your belly or you don't put your hands at all. Not that you chop it off, but you, you simply don't put it on your uh, uh, chest. No, this is not an issue. This is fiqhi issue. It's not an issue of whether a woman has to cover her face or not. It's a fiqhi issue. The issues that would make them go to hell are related to aqeedah. And they do not have concrete evidence from the Quran nor from the sunnah. And it goes without saying again that the main driver for these 72 sects is shaitan, is iblis, is satan. 
He is the main driver for them. And he either does this through extravagance, going extreme, or through negligence and ignorance. And he works through infesting your heart, either with desires, which the majority of Muslims are prisoners of war to these desires, or through casting doubt after doubt. And this is how he manages to get the people to be part of the 72 sects. Now, if you look at the arena today, you'll find that Islam has been hijacked. You find that Islam has been claimed by so many of these sects. The majority of them do not relate to Islam. They are distant from Islam. They're far, far away from Islam. Among them are the people of whims and of doubts, of innovation. They come to the book and they take part of it and they leave what they don't like. So what they like, they highlight it and they show it to everyone. What they dislike, and it's a lot, they hide it and they claim that you do not understand the meaning of it. They use the unclear verses of the Quran and they neglect the crystal clear verses of the Quran or of the Sunnah. Allah Azza wa described them for us in the Quran. And the Quran is not only to seek Allah's blessing by keeping it in your bag or in the glove compartment so that you don't have an accident or under the pillow so that your wife would not poison you. This is inevitable, it's gonna happen. But the Quran is not a protection in this physical form. Allah did not reveal it to the Prophet ﷺ to be kept as a good omen in your back or like a, a, a lot of the Saudi Airlines pilots who are great friends of mine, they keep it in their uh, flight kit. And when you ask them, when was the last time that you read it? He says, I think in Ramadan three years ago. So why are you carrying it? He said, Baraka. No, Quran was revealed to be recited and not only to be recited, to be understood and not only to be understood, to be implemented in our lives. Otherwise, there's no point in reading it, reciting it, if you're not going to implement it and do it. Allah says in the Holy Quran, it is he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has sent down to you, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, the book, the Quran. In it are verses that are entirely clear. They are the foundations of the book, Ummul Kitab. And others, not entirely clear. So as, of, as for those in whose hearts there is a deviation, fi qulubihim, Zayr. In their hearts, there is a deviation. Allah the Almighty says, they follow that which is not entirely clear. Therefore, seeking al-fitna and seeking for its hidden meanings. But none knows its hidden meanings except Allah and those who are firmly grounded in knowledge. They say, we believe in it, the whole of it, are from Allah, from our Lord, the clear and the unclear. So Allah Azza wa is telling us that among us, there are people with deviation in their hearts. So this is point two. As our, as our brothers uh, who play baseball say, strike two, we have strike one. Strike one is that there are 72 sects in hell. Strike two, there are people among us who have this deviation and their hearts. So are we among them? Well, this is what we have to find out. Inshallah, that we would not be. But Islam has been hijacked also, not only by the people of innovation and following their desires and whims, but also by righteous people. People like you and me, 
people who claimed to follow the Quran and the Sunnah. It was hijacked by them because they've limited the truth only to themselves. So they have, and they're the possessors of the ultimate truth. And they use the methodology of the former American president. If you're not with us, you are against us. And they failed to portray the true Islam and to carry the true identity of Islam. All what they have succeeded in, in eliminating people from the loop of Islam and from the circle of the saved group. And they were forced to do this, unfortunately, especially in this country. I've seen, since I've been here, a lot of respect and generosity from the brothers and sisters in this country. And it's overwhelming. MashaAllah, the generosity was yani, illustrated in uh, the fundraising. This you cannot find anywhere else except in the UK. The people, MashaAllah, la quwwata billah, they are generous. They are forthcoming for the sake of Allah because of their sincerity. Unfortunately, we have a number of students of knowledge as well. MashaAllah, they're good students of knowledge. MashaAllah, they're sincere. Uh, they have quite a good amount of knowledge, but they're not scholars yet. And in this country, I've noticed, you've seen I've, I've gained lots of weight. Whenever I come, people keep on inflating me. Sheikh, 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 until I believe that. I say, yes, I'm Sheikh. If, if I enter a room, why isn't everybody standing up? And if somebody wants to greet me, I do this so that he could kiss my head. As if I'm a real Sheikh. And this is an illness that annihilates a proper student of knowledge. The minute he thinks that he is now a full-fledged scholar, meaning that even if there's something I could not find the answer to, I could not give the fatwa because I don't have the means to that. It's above my level. Well, everybody's waiting for a fatwa. Mm, I'll improvise. I'll shoot from the hip. I don't have to do a full draw. I'll, I'll just do something. So I believe that I'm a sheikh. I'm a scholar. I'm a alim. And whenever somebody comes to me with the fatwa of the Supreme Council of Scholars or from the permanent committee, real, real scholars say, they don't know. They've never been to the UK. I've been there. And this is a big problem. This is why Islam has been hijacked by so many people. And each one of them say that I am on the right path and I am part of the saved group. Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal told us who are those who will be saved, inshaAllah, on the Day of Judgment. For example, Allah says in the Quran, and whoever contradicts and opposes the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the right path has been shown clearly to him and follows other than the believer's way, we shall keep him in the path he has chosen and burn him in hell. What an evil destination. So this is the path of the saved group. However, I still can't put my finger on which group you're talking about. And the one million dollar, we're in pounds, the one million pound question would be, which group are you referring to? So that I can identify myself. Am I with the saved group or not? Because we have lots of sects, lots of schools of thought, lots of ahzab, lots of groups, lots of tariqa, as they call it. And they all claim to have to be the only one, the only group that is saved. So which one would that be? Well, definitely, if you look at the Quran and study it, you will know the answer. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran to those who are deceived by, the, by their own handiwork, Allah says, Say, Qul, shall we tell you the greatest losers in respect of their deeds? Those whose efforts have been wasted in this life 
while they thought, and underline this, while they thought that they were acquiring good by their deeds. Everyone thinks that he is acquiring good by his deeds. So, in order to know whether you are among the saved group or not, you have to go back to the basics. And I believe that Abu Osama's lecture was going back to the basics, going back to the foundations of Islam, to the Quran and Sunnah. Don't be deceived by your own whims and desires. Don't be deceived by what people tell you. You have to cross-reference whatever you do on the Quran and on the Sunnah. Allah the Almighty says, O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And those of you Muslims who are in authority and if you differ in anything among yourself, he did not tell us to go to the, those with the authority. If we differ in anything between us, the point of reference would be refer it to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. If you believe in Allah and in the last day. So whenever we have a dispute among us, the referee should be the point of reference has to be Allah and his messenger. And by Allah, we're referring to the Quran. And by his messenger, we're referring to the authentic sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And one again would say, okay, but still, how can I identify whether I'm on the right track or not? The elders say that I am on the right tra track. The sheikh in the masjid says that I am on the right track, but he is in difference and dispute and he's fighting with the other sheikh in that other group. And whenever I pray there, he says, you have to repeat your salah. Though they're, they're reading the same books of aqidah, they're praying the identical way of prayer. What is the difference? It's the allegiance, it's the sect, it's the madhab, it's the hizb. What is it? How would I know? Well, scholars say that an individual Muslim has to be one of the three. You're either a scholar. And a scholar is a person who follows the dalil, the evidence, who follows the Quran, follows the Sunnah, and he follows the authentic interpretation of the scholars, the other scholars. He has to be, he has to possess a lot of tools to enable him to do this, such as the knowledge of the Quran. He has to be knowledgeable of the verses that deals at least, that deal at least with ahkam. So that he could stem the rulings from the Quran. He has to be knowledgeable with sunnah. He has to know the books of hadith. He has to know the interpretation and the meanings of these hadith. He has to know the science of mustalah al-hadith that deals with the authenticity of a hadith. Because what's the use knowing a number of hadiths and using them as your references and evidences while they are unauthentic. He has to know the science that deals with usul al-fiqh, the fundamentals of fiqh that governs the rules and regulations that allow you to understand what you're reading. He has to be knowledgeable in the fiqh itself. So he has to know the previous opinions of scholars and how they got their rulings from the evidences and then he can cross-reference and knows how he, they got there and whether this was the right way or not. There are many sciences and tools that enable a person to be a scholar, but above all, he has to be knowledgeable in Arabic. You can't expect a person who is an un-Arab or, well, let me rephrase that, a person who does not know Arabic to come and give rulings and to talk about Islam, and he doesn't even know how to interpret woman sharri ghasiqin idha waqab. While I was in Derby a few uh, uh, time a, a while ago, a brother came to me and started asking me about the Islam of the Muslim rulers, and he's telling me that they're not Muslims, they're kafir, they're doing this, and I spent like half an hour talking to him, 
and explaining to him, brother, you cannot nullify people's Islam just like this. There are conditions to be fulfilled. There are obstacles to be removed. There are a lot, of, a, a long and hard process to go through. And it's not your job and mine. And I spent half an hour shivering in the cold. And the brother is talking me, to me. He's got his jumper and his jacket. And I was only wearing this. So after a ha half an hour of healthy, well, it's not healthy. It's lengthy, maybe, but it's unproductive. Conversa conversation, I had to be a little bit rude, which I'm not usually accustomed to. Anyhow. I had to be rude. And I said, brother, you recite in, this, in, 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 in every rak'ah, maybe, in every salah, in every day and night, surat al-falaq. And Allah says, وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ Very short ayah. What is the meaning of that? He said, I don't know Arabic. I said, mashallah, if you don't know Arabic and you want to bring and topple governments down and nullify people's Islam and you don't even know the basics of Arabic. And that was it, alhamdulillah. The brother said, Zakallah khair. And he left. Because he got the point. So therefore, you are one of the three. Either you're a scholar or a student of knowledge. You're not a scholar yet. You are a scholar to be. A scholar in the making. You have possessed all of these sciences, but in a lower degree. You're unable to come up with a verdict of your own. You are unable to make up an opinion of your own or a view of your own. But by looking in the different schools of thought and by cross-examining their evidences and how they reached, then I'm able, inshallah, to come up with a conclusion that seems to me the most authentic opinion. It's not an opinion that I have made up. And it's not, it has nothing to do with fatwa shopping. The majority of Muslims now are doing fatwa shopping. They go into a supermarket with a cart. They go to the shampoo aisles and they see that, okay, I like this three in one. Mm, nice, I'll put it. And they take a number of things and then they go to this school of thought. This is halal, okay? This is haram. No, 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 no. I'll take it from here. The, the one that was haram here, it's halal here. I'll take it. And at the end of the day, they have their cart full of weird opinions that, does not that do not relate to the Quran and Sunnah, but they relate to the schools of thought. So, so they chose the weakest and the most odd of opinions to collect their own religion, which does not relate to Islam. We do this a lot in Saudi Arabia. When a woman wants to travel somewhere, she goes to her husband, she, stay, she says, I'd like to travel to see my family. He said, I'm not going to take you. She said, well, you have to. She says, go on your own. She says, I, doesn't have a, I don't have a mahram. He said, no, no problem. He gets the satellite receiver. And we have more than 500 satellite channels. So he goes, okay, channel one, Saudi Arabia, they're too strict. Channel two, this country, channel three, this country. Okay, this country is good. Let's listen what the sheikh says. And the sheikh says, you can go without a mahram. The prophet says it's, it's not halal, but as long as you're in an airplane and they're all, you know, it's safe. It's okay, go. See, he says it's okay. And he goes on to choose whatever religion he wants from the weird fatwas. So this is what a student of knowledge does not do because he fears Allah. He looks into the opinions of scholars and he chooses the opinion that he believes is the correct one at the side of Allah. Because at the side of Allah, which is the truth? All of these schools of thought or one? It has to be one. It cannot, the truth cannot be two at the side of Allah Azza wa Jal. It has to be one. But the one who made the mistake, Allah will give him one reward. The one who made correct uh, uh, choice, Allah will give him two rewards. But for you as an individual, it's not permissible for you to go and pickpocket uh, whatever alim you see or school of thought, and which makes you the third type of the three types of people. And they are the general mass, al am They are the ignorant ones. They could be PhD holders. They could be engineers. 
they could be physicians and doctors, but they are laymen when it comes to fiqh, when it comes to Islamic knowledge. Like I am a layman when I have a, 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 a toothache, I have to go to a dentist. I would be doing a wrong choice if I go to a mechanic <laughs> to fix my tooth. Likewise, I'm a layman in mechanics, in mechanics. I, I, I can't fix my engines if it's broke. Likewise, I don't know how to make a drawing for my house. I don't know how to do this and that because each individual is specialized in a particular science. So the majority of us are laymen. And laymen have to choose one single alim to follow. They have to trust him. They have to know that he's humble, that his ethics are good, that he's not arrogant, that he's knowledgeable, that he has piety and righteousness in his heart. He doesn't sit with the opposite sex and intermingles and, and, and cracks jokes and have, Allah knows what he has. So if I find a alim with, that fits this, then this is the one I should follow if I do not have the knowledge that entitles me to differentiate between the other schools of thought. Therefore, to stop people from hijacking Islam, we have to go back to what Allah has instructed us. Go back to the Quran and to the authentic Sunnah. Clear your heart to all the other brothers. They're all your brother. Always carry the flag of Islam. What are you? Muslim. Yeah, yeah, I know. Salafi, super Salafi. What are you? No, no, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Muslim. This is my religion. Okay, what kind of school of thought you follow? I respect all kinds of scholars. They're on my head. Okay, are you Hanafi, Shafi? This is a school of thought. They're all good. Yeah, yeah. what are you, a cocktail? No, I'm not. I'm a Muslim. What was Umar ibn al-Khattab? What was Ibn Umar? What was Ibn Abbas? What was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud? The companions, what flag did they carry? Didn't they have different of opinions? Not only in fiqh issue, also in aqidah as well. Imagine, but not without following the evidence. Their difference was not because of the whims or because of their forefathers or because of their elders or because of the shuyukh, no. Their differences was based on righteousness and on the evidence. They differed. Did the Prophet see Allah or he did not? Some say he saw him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and others say no, he could not. They differed in the day of judgment when the scale is brought up. What is to be weighed? Is it the records? Or is it the deeds themselves? Or would the bodies themselves be weighed on the scale on the day of judgment? And three opinions are all correct. All three would be weighed as the most authentic opinion of scholars. So they differed in these things. They differed in the gold that a woman has, the jewelry. Is there zakah or not? So they differed in so many things, but this did not stop them from being brothers. Yunus as Safadi, may Allah have mercy on his soul, said that I debated with a Shafi once, and we differed. And the following day, he came up to me, took my hand and said, Yunus, isn't it possible that we differ and still be brothers for the sake of Allah? He said, I have never seen anyone smarter like a Shafi. He's wise. Can't be this wise. Therefore, I conclude my talk with a request that we all become brothers for the sake of Allah. If I differ with you in your opinion, I respect your difference. And I respect what you say as long as it is not in the core of aqidah, as long as it's not something that would make you a deviant person. Yani I respect that you worship the graves and that you slaughter to them and that you call the dead. No. <laughs> then change your aqidah, brother. Change your religion. No, this is something you cannot fool with. This is the difference between Islam and other than Islam. But if you believe that covering the face of the, uh, 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 the, the, the woman is mandatory and I don't or the opposite, it's a difference of opinion that was there for hundreds of years 
and it will remain to be, I respect what you believe and you respect what I believe and this does not come in between us and we should never do the fatwa shopping and we should always be proud that we are Muslims. Wallahu a'lam. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulina Muhammad.